Hi friends, and thanks for tuning in. In a previous video, I walked you through the basics of the Elastic Container Service, or ECS, and we set up a simple service that ran an Nginx container. Link above and below if you want to check out that video. But to give you the summary, this is what we built. If you haven't built it, don't worry, we're going to start from scratch in this video so you can follow along. But basically where we ended up was that a user can make a request to a container's public IP address, and that launches a simple web page using an Nginx container from the Amazon Elastic Container Registry public gallery. And this works just fine, but in the real world, it's not likely that you're going to be running just one task or that you're giving out the public IP address of the container to your users. Instead, you're probably going to have something more like this with multiple tasks. This is going to give us high availability so that if one task dies, we can fail over to the others and keep functioning. And then in front of that, you're going to have a load balancer. In the ECS world, it's an application load balancer, which handles HTTP requests. And this is how we're going to distribute traffic across the different containers. Similar to how you'd set up an ALB to distribute across EC2 instances, if you've done that before. The load balancer, of course, has a listener, which is going to listen for client requests. Those requests are then routed to targets. This is going to be the IP address of the task slash container. And then all of those targets sit in a target group. And this allows us to set properties for the overall group, things like doing health checks or the algorithm that we use to distribute the traffic and so on. So a lot going on. Let's break this down and figure out how to build it. Here's the steps we need to take. First, we need to create two security groups, one for the load balancer and then another for the service slash containers that's going to accept traffic from the load balancer. Let me show you what I mean. So first, our load balancer needs a security group that allows inbound traffic on port 80. We're going to call that application load balancer security group. And then secondly, our service or containers need a security group that allows traffic from the load balancer. You remember that previously we were just having users hit the containers IP directly over port 80, but now we want to limit traffic to only what's coming from the load balancer. We're going to call this one container from ALB security group. And then we're going to deploy a new service. This time it's going to run three tasks rather than just one. We'll create a load balancer for it. And we're going to do that during the wizard as we're creating the service itself. And then we're going to use that security group that we created in step one to allow traffic to the service from the application load balancer. All right, let's go. We'll start by creating those two security groups that we talked about, and those are under EC2. It's in recently visited for me, but you can come up to EC2 in the top search bar here and navigate there. And over here on the left navigation under network and security, click on security groups and we'll create a new one. This first one is going to be application load balancer security group. And the description, basically what it does, we're going to say inbound traffic port 80 from anywhere. And then we need to make that true by creating some inbound rules. So we'll add a rule for HTTP traffic. That of course is on port 80. And this will come from anywhere, which here under your CIDR blocks is going to be 0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. That looks good. We don't need to make any other updates here. We can just create the security group. And then we'll need to create that second security group. So back here to security groups and create security group. And this one's going to be for the container from ALB. So container from ALB security group. For description, this will be inbound traffic from the application load balancer security group. And then to make that true, we need an inbound rule down here, add rule. This one you'll want to say all TCP. The source over here will be custom. And then if you click in the box here next to the magnifying glass, scroll down and we want to choose the application load balancer. And this is the one that we created earlier and say that the only traffic that's allowed to this security group for the containers is stuff that's coming from the load balancer. Okay, that's all we need to do here. Scroll down, create your security group. And then we'll use those later on in the demo. Now, for those of you who didn't follow along with the previous video, you won't have a cluster or a task definition yet. So to make sure you can still follow along, I'm going to go do that really quickly and get those set up. If you already have them, feel free to skip ahead to where we deploy the service and check out those timestamps there. But let's just quickly 
Come back to ECS. Make sure that you've toggled on the new ECS experience up here on the top left. It's quite a bit different from the older one, and I would imagine the new one is what we're going to have going forward, so let's just get used to it. And come into clusters. I'll create a new cluster. Like I said, I'll just go through this really quickly. I'll call this my first cluster. I'll leave the defaults on everything else. We're going to go with Fargate for our infrastructure. That, of course, is serverless, meaning we don't have to worry about any of the servers underlying this functionality, which is awesome. And then we'll create. So our cluster is spinning up. And then we also need to create a new task definition. So over here on the left, I'll expand this, come into task definitions, and then we'll create a new one. And this is where we fill in the details of the container that we want to use. For the task definition family name, I'm going to say Nginx task definition. And then for the container details, we're going to be pulling this one from the Elastic Container Registry. I've got that open on a new tab out here, gallery.ecr.aws. And if you search for Nginx, and make sure you've got a verified account over here on the left. It's this top one right here that we want. And I'll want to copy this URI here. So I'll copy that to my clipboard. And then back here, you'll paste that in right here. And then the name of the container is Nginx. We'll leave everything else, the defaults here, say next. For environment, this is where the tasks should run. We are using a Fargate, remember, so it's going to spin these up and down for us. But we can choose the operating system. I'm going to go with Linux x86. For task size, this is super simple. We just need the bare minimum here, 0.5 CPU, and then memory will go with 1 gig. Everything else the default. Scrolling down, next, and then create. All right, so we've got our cluster and we have our task definition. Now we can actually start working with the service. Let me close out of some of these messages up here and we'll back up to the top, come into the cluster. And then down here under services, let's say deploy. This is how we actually create the service. It's filled in the cluster information for us. We don't need this advanced configuration, so I'll just collapse that. And then down here, we say we want to launch a group of tasks as opposed to just a single task. So creating a service here. For task definition, we should just have the one, the Nginx task definition that we created just a minute ago. We'll go with the latest revision. I've done this a few times, so my revision is five, but yours is probably one. That's okay. And then for service name, I'll say Nginx with ALB service. And here, let's go with launching three tasks. I'll leave everything else the same in that section. Under networking, make sure you use an existing security group here. And this one should be using the container from ALB security group. So this is what's going to allow traffic from the load balancer to the container. We can deselect this other one. And then down here for load balancer, the important part, this is optional, but obviously that's the whole point of this video. So let's go ahead and use an application load balancer. And we'll just create the new load balancer from here. There is a gotcha that I want to show you. You could create the load balancer separately ahead of time, but let's just create it right here through the wizard. So we'll create a new load balancer. For name, we'll say load balancer for Nginx ECS. This is the container that we're going to load balance. It recognizes that for us. For the listener down here, Leave that at port 80 and obviously protocol HTTP. Now you'll notice that there's no way to specify a security group here for the load balancer. We have to go back and do that later, which is the gotcha that I want to show you. And or if you created the load balancer ahead of time, you could do that. But right here on this screen, at least at the moment, there's no way to specify that security group. So more on that in just a minute. The target group. Let's create a new one. For name, we'll say Nginx target group, protocol, HTTP. And then ECS is going to do the magic here of making sure that things get routed to the appropriate containers. For health check path, if you open up this info link here, the load balancer will periodically send requests to the health check path to make sure that everything's good. The default root path is just a slash. And so that's what we're going to use. Just type that in here. 
and then the grace period, I'm just going to use 20 seconds. Okay, let's deploy this thing. That's deploying. We should now have a load balancer that we can get to. So let me open up a new tab here. Load balancers, of course, are under EC2. Scrolling down, load balancers. Currently provisioning, so we'll give it just a few more seconds. I'll refresh, and it looks like state is active now. So let's copy this DNS name right here for the load balancer, and we'll try to open that up in a new tab and see what happens. What do you think? The moment of truth. We could wait and wait and wait, but I'll tell you that unfortunately nothing is going to happen. And this is the gotcha that I mentioned earlier. There we go, it officially failed. Let's come back into our load balancer. And if we scroll down here to the security section, you'll see that it's using container from ALB Security Group. Now remember, we didn't specify this. We had no way to specify this when we set it up through the wizard as part of creating the ECS service. This should actually be the Application Load Balancer Security Group. So let me give you a visual. So we need to change the security group to use this one in green. It should be Application Load Balancer Security Group, allowing inbound traffic from the world on port 80. For whatever reason, AWS is defaulting it to the one in red, which is incorrect. That's the security group for the ECS service. This might change in the future, but for now, we need to go back and edit that so that it's using the correct security group. So we'll edit security groups here, choose the application load balancer here, deselect the container one, save. Now we're allowing inbound traffic on port 80 from anywhere. And if we come back to our load balancer and refresh, there's our welcome to Nginx web page. And that, of course, is coming from the Nginx container, coming from the public gallery. And as we refresh the page, the traffic will be routed across the different containers that we have. So here's what we have now, an ECS cluster that can run multiple tasks, pulling from the Amazon Container Registry, and then the load balancer is balancing traffic across those different containers. Nice work. Now let's quickly do some cleanup so you don't get any surprise bills at the end of the month. I'll come back into ECS over here. And under clusters, my first cluster, just down here under services, click on your service and delete. We'll do a force delete and delete. We need to get rid of the load balancer as well. So I'll come into the EC2 management console, load balancer and actions, delete. Back to ECS. Let's get rid of our task definition. You can't actually delete these, but you can deregister them. So if you click into the task definition, select it, and then deregister, this will keep it from being used in any future service. Let's delete our cluster. Click into my first cluster and then delete cluster. And we'll confirm. All right, looks good. And then the last thing to do, you're not gonna be charged for these, but just to keep things neat and tidy, let's come into our security groups and we'll select the application load balancer security group and the container from ALB security group. You can select both of these and delete them at the same time. So actions, delete security groups. Now, depending on what you still have running, you might get messages here that there's still resources using some things. So you might just need to wait a minute for everything else to spin down but I will delete this one in green that says it can be deleted. And that should actually release the other one in this case. So if I refresh the container security group got deleted, let's try again with the application load balancer security group, delete. Now we're good and delete and we're good to go. So those are the basics of working with load balancing in ECS. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button so it can spread to more people. And also think about subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.